Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome back to my Garage Workshop. Today I'm starting a new series that is actually an old series just with an official name. I'm calling the series Making Hand Tools to Make Hand Tools to Make Furniture. And as the name implies, the concept of the series is that each video I'll make a hand tool that I'll use to make the next hand tool that I'll ultimately use to build a piece of furniture. This is one of the things I love about hand tool woodworking, is that with a limited set of tools and enough time, you can make the rest of the tools you need to build just about any piece of furniture you want. So I hope with this series that it can act as a roadmap to someone who's looking to get into woodworking, or relies more on power tools and wants to pursue hand tools, to have a series of videos that will show step by step the tools to build first that will enable them to more easily build other tools that will ultimately enable them to more easily make their own furniture. So, without further ado, let's get on to part 3, building a rabbit plane. Now, right off the bat, I want to give credit where credit is due and mention that I am following along with Paul Sellers' Poor Man Rabbit's Plane video. It's a wonderful video and I wouldn't have been able to make this plane without his guidance, so I highly suggest heading over to his channel to watch that video. I'll have a link in the description along with a couple other videos that were helpful to me. So as you saw, I started off with a piece of straight grain maple that is about 10 inches long, 4 inches wide, and about an inch thick. I measured 6 inches from the heel of the plane and laid out a 40 degree line. This will be the bed angle of the plane. Next, using a 1 to 4.5 inch wedge, I drew another line referenced off the bed angle that will account for the wedge that will hold the chisel in place. So for the final layout line, I took the chisel, lined it up with the edge, with the wedge line, and traced the last line. This will help account for the thickness of the chisel. I then needed to lay out lines on the top and bottom of the plane. For the bed angle, I simply marked a line 90 degrees to the face, which would create a flat bed angle. For the wedge line, however, I marked a line 100 degrees from the face. This will create an additional wedging feature that will push the wedge, and therefore the chisel, flat against the inside of the plane. This will be more clearly seen pictured later on. All that was left for the layout was to set my marking gauge to the thickness of the chisel, which in my case was a half inch, and score a line between the two previous marks. With my layout lines drawn, I can move to cutting out the waste. It is really important that the bed angle be straight from edge to edge and square to the face so to help achieve this, I took a scrap piece of board with a square edge and clamped this right along my layout line. Then all I needed to do was press my saw up against the board and saw away. This is actually the first time I've tried this and it worked remarkably well and I highly suggest this as an easier way to achieve a square cut. For the wedge cut, I started with a square piece clamped to the board to ensure the starting cut was straight, but then I had to freehand the angle of the cut as best as I could. And here you can get a good look of the bed angle and wedge wall cuts. With those two cuts done, I could then move on to hogging out the waste. I started by using my chisel at an angle to remove the bulk of the waste. Once the bulk of the waste was removed, I could then use my router plane that I made in the last video of the series to carefully continue removing the waste until I reached my layout line. With that done, the work for the body of the plane was finished, and I could then move on to cutting and shaping the wedge. The first step was to make room for the handle of the chisel, so that the wedge would be able to lie flat against the chisel. I started by cutting down to the curve, and then using my chisel flipped upside down, I was able to cut the rest of the waste out on the curve. And now you can see that the wedge lays flat, however, the next thing I needed to do was angle the front of the wedge to match the angle we cut previously. This was easy enough to do with my hand plane. I just eyeballed the angle and kept using my plane to make minor adjustments until the angle perfectly matched the angle of the plane. I didn't cut the angle on the plane perfectly straight, so I had to go in and use the flat back of the chisel ever so carefully to pare away any of the high spots. Now, it took longer than I show on camera, but I had to make minor adjustments, but after a while, as you can see in this shot, the angle helps the wedge not only push down on the chisel, but fur further tightens everything by pushing the wedge up against the inner part of the plane body as well. Next, I need to cut off the excess and plane the thickness of the wedge to match up with the plane body. 
Cut off the excess, I put some tip blue tape down to protect the sole of the plane, and then cleaned up the angle and the bottom of the wedge on my shooting board. Then, I planed the majority of the waist off of the wedge, and then I put the wedge into the plane, and with the majority of the pressure lying on the plane's body, I planed any high spots off the wedge until the plane was just beginning to cut the plane body itself. Using this technique led to the wedge lining up perfectly with the plane body. The last step of the wedge before the final shaping was to cut a ramp at the tip that serves two purposes. First, it allows space for the plane shaving to have somewhere to go, and second, the ramp helps the plane shaving to curl up and away from the plane, helping everything to not clog up while cutting. Finally, the last step was to round over the top to give the wedge a little more decorative look and not leave it looking boxy and unfinished. Now, the plane will work as is, and I tested it at this point, and it worked wonderfully. But when making grooves, it's important to ensure the groove is running parallel with the face or edge of the board. So to help make this a whole lot easier, I add a sliding fence to the bottom of the plane. I have a thin piece of maple the same width as the plane, which I would recommend using a thicker piece than I did, but the first step is to drill a hole through the fence into the sole of the plane body, while the fence is taped perfectly around the plane. This create a hole that matches exactly. Now, you only need to drill one hole into the solar plane, but I wasn't thinking to end up drilling two. Whoops. <laughs> now with the hole drilled, that will receive the screw. It needs to widen the hole in the fence only. This will allow the screw to freely move along the fence, but tighten into the plane body only. With all that done, I could then mark out the channel the screw will ride in, and use my chisel to remove the waste. I removed all the waste, leaving the little channel that the screw will be able to freely slide in. And this is all I had to do for the fence, which is now totally complete and ready for use. I'll show how I used it later in the video. The final step before finishing was to add some style to the plane and make it feel just a little bit better to use. So to do that, I rounded over the heel of the plane, which really helped it make it feel more comfortable while using it, instead of having a sharp corner jabbing into my palm. I then went with this traditional kind of chamfered look edge along the sides that I had seen in a lot of old planes. This was a lot of fun to do and there's something super satisfying about using a sharp chisel to pare away this waste. Finally, I sanded up the corners and had a little nicer, more comfortable looking plane. All that was left to do was to add a finish on it. For a finish, I put on three coats of Tried and True's Original Wood Finish, which if you've never heard of them, it's a combination of linseed oil and beeswax. It's my go-to finish and I really enjoy it because it leaves a nice, just natural feeling finish. Using the plane is very easy. First, I set the fence. To do this, I took a combination square and I set it to the width of the cut I wanted. For this example, I was using a quarter inch. Then setting the square referencing off of the cutting face, I pushed the fence so that it was butted up against the square, held it down securely with my finger, and then tightened the screw. Did this for both screws, 
and now I have a perfectly parallel fence that will allow me to cut a quarter inch rabbit. Next, I then needed to set the chisel. To do this, I put the chisel and wedge in as best as I could tell by the eye. I tried to set the chisel so that it was about to poke out of the sole of the plane. And I tapped the wedge to secure everything in place and took a pass to see if it'll cut. It didn't cut, so then I tapped the chisel to advance the blade, took another pass to see if it'll cut, and kept repeating this process until the plane started cutting. Once it was cutting, I cut the rabbit. I started on the front of the piece to establish the cut, and slowly worked my way backwards until I was taking a full length cut. As you can see, the little ramp in the ledge makes the shavings give off this nice looking curl. If you've never experienced cutting a rabbit this way, I highly suggest you build a get yourself a rabbit plane and do so because it is highly satisfying. And as you can see, in no time at all, I'm able to cut a nice looking rabbit. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful for you in making your own rabbit plane. I know for me this tool has been such a valuable tool to have in the shop. Something I didn't show is that after I created the video and shot it all, I went in and added these depth stops, followed the same procedure that I did for making the fence, and they've been super helpful in making sure that the rabbit is the same depth all the way across. So the next tool in our little tool series that we're going to be making is this grooving plane. So if you liked what you saw, if you want to be alerted when this comes in the next couple weeks, consider subscribing. I would really love it if you did. I would love it if you just followed along with what I'm doing here in my little shop. And I'm also almost at a thousand subscribers, so that'd be super cool if you helped me kind of hit that first milestone in this small little channel that I have going on. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video making this little grooving plane.